What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Congruent Academy, the place for people in process. Cal here, broadcasting to you from the newly conceived Hall of Half-Formed Thoughts, the proverbial ideation station of Congruent Academy. As the title suggests, in this series, I will be animating, and noobishly at that, and exploring the ideas discussed by whatever and whomever is relevant to me at the time. This is a series about exploring ideas, becoming more consummate in processing and exchanging them, and ultimately coming away with something more or less of a better understanding. At least that's the hope. Sometimes I'm sure I'll get lost in the ideas, though. And what more fitting video could I use to inaugurate this vacuous, empty hull than a clip from the Joe Rogan Experience titled Avoiding the Loser Mentality. This clip is taken from a conversation between Joe Rogan and comedian Nikki Glaser. It was taken from the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, the original link to which will be in the description. Before we start to listen and explore, I feel it is important to demonstrate my intention in doing so. Here at Congruent Academy, we are pro-nuance. I am getting my act together one video at a time. This process is as ennobling as it is challenging, and in pursuing something of maximal meaning to me, I am also constantly having to confront the thoughts that I am a loser and always will be speaking to an empty hall. So this topic is relevant to me, and I know that part of co-creating a culture of encouragement online and IRL, which can contend with the increasing polarity that I've been observing in society and in myself, it's rooted on the foundation of being able to embody and explore profound ideas. There are many reaction videos that exist on YouTube, entire channels, so the format surely needs no introduction. While that traditional style of reaction video content is predominantly governed through interjection, i.e. you'll see maybe five seconds of a clip and then hear what the commentator has to say about it, I much prefer to listen to the clip in its entirety and then to share my thoughts, for those of you who might be strangely interested enough to hear them, and then conclude by working to extract some potential practical actions I can take from what is discussed so that ultimately the exchange of ideas is action-oriented. Timestamps will be provided in the video description to the best of my ability. But again, I am getting my act together one video at a time, so keep your expectations realistic for the time being anyway. My hope is that in listening actively and sharing my half-formed thoughts on subjects and then hearing some of yours, we can come away being that much more articulate and capable of avoiding the loser mentality. So, without further ado, let's hear from Nikki Glazer and Joe Rogan. Hope you enjoy it. Wondering why other people's success or wondering why other people are successful is the refuge of losers. Yes. It's a loser mentality. It's a loser occupation. It's a, it's a, it's a loser practice because you're wondering why other people are successful. Like who gives a fuck? You can say you think it sucks, but to spend time wondering why someone is successful and hating on someone oh. for being successful, it doesn't do any good. It's like, what is that old expression that jealousy is, it's a poison that does the opposite of its intended. Oh, right. It doesn't affect the other person at all, but it poisons yourself. Yeah. It wastes your your energy and time. It, it, it just is so, it's so indicative that you are insecure. Yes. It's like people don't realize how, what a giveaway that is when they are talking shit. You're just like, yeah. ugh, this is just showing me that you fucking don't like yourself. Well, I figured out, there's something that I figured out personally yeah. and that um, I, I try to relay this and I try to be more clear and more concise the way I relay it. The way I look at it is that your mind, you have a certain amount of bandwidth. This is why I don't read Instagram comments or Twitter comments or YouTube comments. Like, I don't have any time. If I read them, it's an accident. But to seek them out, yeah. and go, like, you have bandwidth. I don't spend time wondering why I hate things or hating things or hating on someone or being jealous. You have, let's say, let's call it units. You have a hundred units of bandwidth in your mind. So that means there's a hundred units that you can spend on things you care about 
or you could let your mind be occupied by some stupid fucking Twitter feud that you're in with some idiot that you don't even know, and you could spend 30% of your Twitter bandwidth or your, your, your mind bandwidth on this, and then you only have 70% for the things you love. And then maybe you're, you're involved in some fucking relationship with someone who's an idiot and you're arguing back and forth with them. Well, there's another 30% that's gone. Now you, got, you have 40% left. You have 40% for the things you love instead of 100%. But if you, you only concentrate on the things you care about that mean something to you and learn how to do that, like you were talking about meditation, yeah. it's a form of meditation yep. because you're learning how to avoid the, the little road bumps and the ditches on the side of the road. That can suck yeah, your bandwidth. Can suck your bandwidth. You can give them just a little bit and go, okay, no, no, no. But like, Or you could lean in. Like how you're saying when you stopped drinking, all of a sudden your career took off. Mm -hmm. You started doing well. Because more bandwidth. You had more bandwidth. And you had less problems. This yes. problem that you had that was rotting you away no longer existed. So now all of a sudden it frees up your time and you realize, oh my God, there's so many funny things that I could talk about and I have so much energy and I'm so healthy. I could just go on stage and have fun and then you're killing it. When was the last thing that you go, no, no, got it. Like you maybe gave it a little too much bandwidth. Do you still struggle with those things? No, I don't. And not really anymore, but it's been a gradual process. Like, remember the first... You the had internet. to have been a jealous dude in stand-up. Like, when you first started out, you had to have hated the guy that was getting ahead. Like, right? I don't know any male comic. I definitely was in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, how... It, what, yeah. What, what, what happened to that? You get successful and it didn't no, happen? I no. feel like Before success... Before I was successful. Before I was successful, I realized it was stupid. Long before. Um, because... When I was like an amateur, I would see guys that were killing and, uh, and I'd be like, fuck him. Like, why is he doing good? Like, that guy sucks and this guy sucks. And, you know, why, how come he got this and he got that? And then I remember thinking, like, this is a gigantic waste of time. And I got into comedy because I'm a fan of comedy. And my concentrating on people that suck or being jealous about people that are doing well does me zero good. But... Instead, if someone does well, I can be inspired and I can get fired up by it. I mean, I figured this out in my early 20s. I was like, okay, this is a, yep. I have a poor way of looking at it because it's a, a martial arts thing. Because in martial arts, like you can't be jealous of someone else's ability. You have to realize you might have to fight them someday. So by realizing that they're really good, you, you're forced to be objective about it and you have to go to work. Like you have to go, fuck, that guy's better than me. I got to get better. And you have to go to work. You right. You, there, you, there's, no, there's no positive benefit in underestimating someone. Underestimating someone will get you fucking killed. Like literally. You're going to yeah. get a shin smashed into your face. Like you don't want to ever Convincing yourself that the someone. things that you're jealous of them for aren't really yes. as good. Right. Convincing that will yourself. get your that will get you killed. Oh yeah. So you that's that's it, dude. Yeah. That's totally it. Because the things that I get jealous of or have, and I'm better about it now than I've ever been. But you know, you see other women. I mean, uh, my jealousies are always with other women. Yeah. It's just the way it is, like, and yeah. I have to fight it. And I'm really good about it now to be like actually inspired by women who are funnier than me. But that's awesome. But and to use it to, to be like, okay, then I need to be better. I need to get up to that level. Yes. That is, I need to go home and write. It like fires me up as opposed to like why and it's powerful for everybody it's powerful for them it's powerful for you yes it's like there's no negative aspect to it it's like you should be thankful that there's women out there that make you feel uncomfortable yeah like when i see someone just murder on stage fuck i want to go to work yeah I go right i want to get home and write yeah i want to i want to go perform i'm like fuck that guy just killed or holy shit she just crushed or she's out there killing it and he's he's doing so good it makes me want to work harder and in that sense, as long as someone's not doing anything bad, as long as someone's not victimizing someone, what they're doing is they're 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 showing you that it's possible to do better than you're doing. Yeah. And that's good. What is a loser? By definition, a loser is someone who loses, someone who does not win. And yet, a loser can win, and a winner can lose. The ethos of this video, exploring the qualities of the mentality of a loser, 
who really, for lack of a better word, is someone who could be allocating their energies in more fruitful and dynamic ways, or at the very least, has trapped themselves in toxic patterns of thinking and potentially behavior. I think we can all recognize the pejorative association of the word loser, and that some people, for no fault of their own, can find themselves outside the winner's circle. But stop me if this sounds familiar to you. You're scrolling on your phone, and you get caught up, and the algorithm is now displaying the highlight reels of other people's lives. People who you don't even know. It's only human to want to compare yourselves to what you see, because that's how we relate to one another. We try to find what we have in common, and where we differ. But that which shines also casts shadows. Theodore Roosevelt once said that comparison is the thief of joy. Now, can a loser win? Yes. Can a winner lose? Yes. Life is a strange journey of sorts. Luck and misfortune are two sides of the same coin. But to be kinder, to be inspired, to be benevolent, without losing the fighting spirit, to consult resentment for deeper truths, uncomfortable as they may be, Growth is seldom found in the comfort zone after all. To dim someone else's light is hardly one's right. And yet there are entire economies built around that. Entire vocations. Now, Joe Rogan uses the words occupation and practice to describe this mentality because, again, there are people who exist with the sole vocation to diminish others. Oftentimes, those who diminish others are seeing a reflection of themselves. I've been guilty of doing that, and I'm sure everyone watching this here has too. If not, you're either a pristine winner or a liar, to my estimation. Maybe you're a saint. What do I know? But what I love about this framing of a mentality as a practice is that it recognizes that there are so many conditioned behaviors which occupy our time and our energy those two most valuable, precious resources, which can ultimately be wasted. This is a reminder to watch out for what we repeat, because that can shape our destiny in more ways than one. Time is one of, if not the most precious resource. Take that from someone who recognized that they were wasting so much time that they made a YouTube video about how to forgive themselves for doing so. I suppose now you must be wondering if this video that I'm creating and you're watching in and of itself is a form of time wasting, is a form of not avoiding the loser mentality. You'd be wrong, of course, but I can see how you would think that. The roads we walk down, particularly if we're walking down a road towards what we hope might breed success, will of course in turn breed doubt from those who walk down it, those brave souls, and those who don't but are watching someone else walk it. But why not celebrate it? Why not use it as an opportunity to reflect on how we each define success for ourselves, knowing what we know about ourselves? Dr. Jordan Peterson, a psychologist whose perspectives on such topics as incremental improvement I tend to agree with, would say that the best person to compare yourself to is who you were yesterday, because there is no better benchmark than that. Resentment is corrosive, and Nikki and Joe both speak to this when discussing their jealousies. Strangely, this emotion can be experienced as a downward or upward spiral, which again, it goes back to the importance of the anti-fragile mentality that's so critical to the values of Congruent Academy, the values I strive to get better at embodying each day. But can resentment actually change your life for the better? Only if your response is to use it as a motivational force for good. Nikki Glazer aptly points out that in this experience of hating on someone, you're showing yourself that you are insecure. It speaks to a larger idea that what we see in others is really just a part of ourselves reflected back at us. It may not always be a perfect mirror image. Sometimes it may look distorted, as though we were looking in the reflection of a funhouse mirror. Nikki Glazer explains in this clip for her experience that when she quit drinking, her work got better. It's important to note, I can't speak to why she made that decision, but she recognized that it was impacting her negatively. And this decision to change speaks to the nature of sacrifice itself. 
makes me wonder, can you learn to walk and then to run when you've always felt you've needed a crutch to stand? Yes, I believe so. And sometimes maybe I just want to believe so. But Glazer doesn't allow Rogan to just get away with any potential sermonizing on the mound, pointing out he had to have been a jealous dude. Yes, of course he had been. And she knew that, because she knows herself, and she knows human nature. And that's what makes her such a brilliant comedian. But Rogan's realization on this matter came before he was successful. And perhaps that's the realization that ultimately made him as successful as he is. I wouldn't want to speculate too much further on that, though, because at this point, that would be occupying the refuge of losers. Joke. Flipping the switch to being inspired and motivated is something that I'm working to habituate because I can see what life looks like down the road if I don't. Because ultimately, energy and emotion is something that requires a response, and ideally a productive and well-intentioned one, or lest it be wasted. Seeing someone doing well can be encouraging to one person and discouraging to someone else. How strange is that? And yet, in seeing objective results from someone else, one cannot help but view themselves objectively and see how they stack up to them. By allowing myself to be humbled by that which I am not yet and do not yet know, I am allowing myself to think of an ideal future that I can then work toward right now, or as soon as I'm done chowing down on my third burger, eating my feelings. Only joking. I'm on my fifth, actually. So, one of the valuable aspects of this clip is that I can see that it's important to not underestimate anyone, and least of all yourself. We are all so full of surprises. That's what makes life so exciting. But to the point of objective comparison, these two people, both of whom who have risen to the pinnacle of success in their fields, may be worth listening to. By deluding yourself that you're more competent than someone else, which may just be a way of harboring and festering insecurity that you may not want to address, I have to take a step back and recognize that life is short. In life and death, one-on-one -on -one scenarios, yes, there can be a degree of luck involved. But generally speaking, it is the person that works harder and smarter for longer who has the competitive advantage. And I would ask anyone listening, instead of projecting out that image onto someone who you may feel adversarial to, think about it in the context of how you relate to yourself. It's the best strategic response. Let that reality check get you fired up, like Nikki and Joe. Not have you asking, why? That's a terrible impression, I'm sorry, Nikki Glazer. In allowing myself to experience an unsettling restoration of agency, it serves me better than assuming the role of a helpless victim, and I hope to see how the tide turns in time. Another remarkable insight from this video comes from Joe Rogan's perspective about bandwidth, which is going to be the centerpiece of the practical portion of this video. I'd actually like those of you who have made it this far to comment how you allocate your bandwidth presently in a given day and how you would optimally allocate it. How do you want to spend your time and attention if you don't feel like you're doing it right, right now? And if that means clicking away from this video, right now to go and do something that's more important, I encourage you to do that because this video will still be here when you return and maybe that other thing won't. Cultivating the dedication to only focus on the things that are meaningful and nourishing to you is a form of meditation. And if you're healing, a form of medication. It is a practice that requires patience and practice. I know I'm definitely not there yet, but I know that I'm working on it because I'm working on me. In conclusion, Rogan's realization as to how to avoid the loser mentality came before he was successful. And I will remove that tongue from cheek to point out that if I speculate much further, I will be occupying 
the refuge of losers. So though there may be times in life that can leave us feeling sidelined, when we're on the sidelines, we can cheer on teammates, our fellow man, our fellow human, who, while, while each idiosyncratic and unique in our own peculiar and mysterious ways, we have so much more in common with one another than we care to recognize if we're getting caught up in the loser mentality. And we can see how those who are getting to start the match play the game. And then in the off season and in practice sessions, we can work so that when our number gets called from the sidelines onto the field, we know that we can make a positive impact because we are prepared. So as long as you feel oppressed and tormented and cast in a negative light by the triumphs of your fellow man rooting for their downfall, you must ask yourself, are you doing this because you feel fundamentally insufficient? And if the answer is yes or isn't immediately no, I implore you to reconsider this means of operating in the world for everyone's sake, but most importantly, for your own. That does it for this inaugural animated inquiry experience in the Hall of Half-Formed Thoughts. Until next time, power to the people in process. <laughs>